Welcome to video three. We're going to talk more about the actual definition of a derivative, um, and we will talk about some of the notation a little bit more. Uh, we're going to apply it to finding the tangent line, which we did in the last video. We're going to talk about that rate of change idea, and then, of course, uh, what it looks like as an object is moving. It's just a little bit more in depth. Okay, so let's look at this first example. So from yesterday's video, you should be able to do this, but let's find the derivative for this function. So uh, according to the rule of the derivative, I want the limit as h approaches 0 of, so I'm going to do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So here we go. Keeping my limit notation. Make sure you guys are being uh, good with that. So I'm going to plug in x plus h for every single x that I see in the original equation. Minus, and I like to use a bracket here, um, just f of x, which is just the actual function. And then over h. Okay, so then I'm going to start multiplying this stuff out and reducing. And so on top, when I multiply, so I'm going to first square this, and then I'm multiplying everybody by 3. And I'm telling you that I get 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. And I get minus 12x minus 12h. There's a lot of work that just went into that. All right, minus 8. And then I'm going to distribute my negative, so negative 3x squared plus 12x plus 8 over h. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we can simplify, because again, if I try to plug in h equals 0 at this point, I just get 0 over 0, and that means I can do something to reduce this. So if I were to cancel out the values that are able to be canceled, you'll notice everything that didn't have an h canceled, and that's going to happen pretty much every time. So then if I take an h out of everything that's left over, like this, I get 6x plus 3h minus 12 over h. The h's can cancel. Then I can actually plug in 0, and I end up with 6x minus 12. Okay, so this, remember, is my relationship for slope or for the derivative. So this is actually the, this is how we would write it. The derivative of, of f of x is 6x minus 12. So that's part a. If I then want to find b, I'm just plugging in 4 to that equation. And so I end up with 24 minus 12 or 12. And then for c, same thing. I'm plugging in negative 2. And so I end up with negative 24. Pretty easy. Okay, um, so for my next example, I'm going to use the same results I just got to continue on. And if I want the slope of the tangent line at this point, so that just means I just want the slope, I just want the derivative at that point. So basically, if I can plug in 3, I could find the correct slope that I'd want. So you already know it's 6x minus 12 for the derivative, so I'm going to plug in 3. So the slope at 3 would be 6. Okay, uh, the point on the graph which the tangent line is horizontal. Well, again, the tangent line is this relationship, right? It's the slope. So I want to know basically, this is asking when the slope or the derivative is horizontal, that's 0. That's important to note. Okay, so I'm literally, for part B, just setting my derivative or my slope of my tan line equal to 0, and solving. So at x equals 2, now that's not enough. Technically, if I want the point, I need the y value, so just plug x back into the original. So I could plug it in to see what the y value would be there. So what do we get? Negative 20. So the point where it's horizontal the slope of the tangent would be horizontal would be negative 2, 20. That's the actual point. If they just want the x value, you can just stop it too. Okay, so there are some shortcuts for doing the derivative. Uh, number one says, what's the derivative if it's linear? Well, if it's just a linear function, guys, the slope is the same the whole time. It's just the slope of the original graph. That should make sense, I think. Um, what's the derivative of a constant? A constant would just be like f of x equals 5, and so that would be like a horizontal line. So what's the derivative of a horizontal, or what's the slope, excuse me, of this horizontal line? 
always zero. So again, hopefully that makes sense. And then three um, is a power rule. And this you're going to see me do in just a minute. The power rule basically says this. Um, if you have x to a power, you can multiply the front by the power of n and then take the exponent down by a power. You're going to see me do that in just a second. So here we go. So if I want to find, here's f of x, I want to find the derivative first. So I want to find f prime of x. And I can do each little component separately. That's another rule of derivatives. Um, so I'm going to find the derivative of this part, then this part, and then so on. So the derivative of this guy, which is a power. So to find that derivative, I'm going to multiply by the power out front. So that ends up being 2, which was the power, times the 2 that was already out front. And then I'm going to take the power of x down by 1. So 2 minus 1 would bring it down to a power of just 1. Um, this is a constant or a linear function, so that just ends up being negative 1, uh, the coefficient, and then the derivative of a constant is 0, so that part's 0. So the derivative of my function is 4x minus 1. Again, the derivative of any line is just the slope of that line, which would have been negative 1, so that's why that's just minus 1. Okay, for part B, I want to find the equation of the line tangent to f at point 1. As soon as you see this, I want to find the equation of the tangent line. I need a slope and a point. And to get the point, I can use the fact that I want to go through 1, but where am I going to get that y? Plug it in. So if I plug in a 1 to this equation to see what the actual point is, we get 2 minus 1 plus 1, so I end up with 2. Now they get the slope, well, you need the derivative. So we already did the derivative. This again, remember, right here, this is the, the relationship for slope. So if I want the slope at x equals 1, I can plug in 1 to my slope relationship. So I know the slope is going to be 3. So write the equation of the line, no problem. Point slope form, y minus the y value equals the slope, x minus the x value, and you're done. Okay, and then the last one says, find the points on the graph where the tangent line is horizontal. Again, this means that derivative is zero. So you can literally take your derivative equation, 4x minus 1, and set it equal to zero. And so I end up with 1 fourth. Now again, if I wanted to find the y value for that, I'd have to plug 1 fourth back into my original equation, which I can do. Um, I get 1 fourth squared minus 1 fourth plus 1. So this ends up being 1 16th, which times 2 is 1 8th, minus 1 fourth plus 1. If I put all these in terms of eighths, I think I get, I end up with, let's see, 9 eighths minus 2 eighths, so 7 eighths. So I would have the point 1 fourth comma 7 eighths would be where I have a horizontal tangent. We said point points because sometimes there are more than one place where the tangent line is horizontal. All right, moving on. Um, let's talk about what it means to be differentiable, which means you can take the derivative. So a function is differentiable at a particular x value, so we call that a, if, first of all, the graph has to be continuous through that x value, okay? And then the derivative, this means the derivative, so the slope as you're coming from the left and the slope as you're coming from the right have to be the same. This is basically the part where it would fail having, um, being able to be differentiable because there's like a sharp turn or corner or something. So looking at the graph below, like this is not differentiable at negative one because it's not continuous. It's not differentiable at zero because again, it's not continuous. Um, it's not differentiable at one because we're not continuous. And then two, which is continuous, looks like it would be differentiable, but because you have a sharp turn there, you also can't take the derivative. So let's just take a look at how I'm going to ask that or how the AP will ask that. So they'll say, is this function differentiable at negative 1? Well, first of all, we have an issue with continuity, a possible issue, at negative 1. So the first thing you have to do is see, is it continuous at x equals negative 1? Okay, so let's try that out. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 to this side. So I get negative 1 squared plus 1, which ends up being 2. On the other side, I get 3 times negative 1 plus 5, which also ends up being 2. That means it approaches the same thing on either side, so it's continuous. Now, let's talk about being differentiable. Um, differentiable would mean that they also have to have the same slope 
as they approach each side, which means that when you take the derivative, they approach the same thing. So the derivative of this part using our rule, this is a power, bring the power out front, take it down by one, two X, this is a constant, so zero, would have to be the same thing when I take the derivative of this guy. The derivative of this guy is three, that's a constant, that's a zero, so just three. And we're looking at X equals negative one. So then when I plug in a negative one for X, does that make it true? No. So this is not differentiable at x equals negative 1. Last but not least, we need to talk about vertical tan lines. So we said that our graph also isn't differentiable at vertical tan lines. Um, and so again, a tan line is referring to the slope um, relationship. So we're saying basically if the derivative has a vertical tangent, um, then we have a problem. So um, the way that we could see that if it had a vertical tangent is if the slope went off to infinity. I'm using the absolute value because it could be negative infinity, but it's shorter to write it that way. So let's see an example of that. So here's the original function y um, or f of x, and I want to know, does it have a vertical tangent at 0? All right, well, first I have to find the derivative. Um, we can write the derivative of y as y prime, which is kind of like when we did f. So then let's do our derivative. So we have a power, so we're going to bring that power out front and multiply, and then we're going to take it down by 1. Now, 2 thirds minus 1, we got to make common denominators, gives me negative 1 third, right? That's my derivative. Okay, if I rewrite this, then that's like 2 over 3x to the 1 third, right? There's my derivative written a little differently. So if you're going to have a vertical tangent, that means your slope has, um, is undefined. So your being undefined would mean that your denominator is zero. So I'm looking to see if my tan line or my slope equation has any zeros of the denominator. Well, yeah, I think you guys can easily see that there's going to be a place where this is zero. Divide both sides by three. Technically, you could take everybody to the third power. I mean, you can do this without doing all that, but yep. If x is zero, we would cause a vertical tan line. Um, and so that means, uh, yes, we have a vertical tan line at x equals zero. Okay, these are just some notations of derivative. So f prime of x, y prime, and then this is new. dy dx um, is the derivative of y with respect to x. And then here's me doing second derivative, third, fourth, and you get the idea, so on and so forth. Notice the way that we write it. Um, I can explain this in class if you want me to later. So let's find the first four derivatives of y equals 12x to the one-third. So let's start with the first derivative. So the first derivative, I've got a power function. So I'm going to multiply the coefficient by one-third, and I'm going to take it down by a power, which gives me negative two-thirds. Again, remember, I'm taking the power minus one. That's how I'm getting negative two-thirds. Okay, there's my first derivative, and it's fine to leave it like this for now. Um, I guess, well, I guess I could make it 4. But you don't have to worry about changing the fractional exponent. Second derivative, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring my power out front, multiply it, and take it down by 1, which would give me negative 5 thirds. That might take you a few times to see that, which gives me negative 8 thirds, x to the negative 5 thirds. So there's my second derivative. Third derivative, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to multiply. I'm going to do this a little faster. I'm going to multiply this by negative 5 thirds, which gives me positive 40 ninths x to the, take this down by 1, which is really down by 3 over 3, so negative 8 thirds. And then I'll do my last, my fourth derivative here, multiply out front by a negative 8 thirds, which gives me negative 320 over 9 times 3, 27 x to the take it down by 1, that would give me negative 11 thirds. Okay? Again, if you're wondering where I, how I got this part, I'm bringing the negative 8 thirds out front. I'm taking it down by 1. Top times top, bottom times bottom, bam. You're going to have to be able to work with fractional values and get common denominators. Okay, good luck with the problem set. I'll see you guys in class and we can talk about it a little bit more.